Hey friends! Okay, I just realized, still in my Sapporo coat. Okay, I'll take it off. I think it's safe to say I am pretty dang obsessed with this baby. And we're gonna talk about it pretty soon here. So let's go. here big big welcome I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way holy cow it is already the first monthly makes video of the new year 2021 my makes January makes 2021 let's get into it so the first thing I made this month was my Manhattan dress this is a pattern from New Horizons Designs, which is now Pattern Niche. I always forget that. If you don't know, I do videos over on their channel as well. And one of the videos I did this month was for this Manhattan dress. It is incredible. I am I am so happy with how it turned out, other than I should have used matching serger thread. Kicking myself for that. But I am really happy with it. I used a thrifted cut of fabric that I had. It's like a a ponty potentially I did a burn test on this fabric and I think there might be wool content in it so I don't know can there be like wool ponty that's got to be a thing right anyway that's what I did I did the it's like a boat neckline on the front and then I chose to do the V back I think there's different options for that but the reason I did the video on it was because it's a peplum waist and I was showing how to adjust the waistline. So I did alter the waistline a little bit about three quarters of an inch to fit my body. And other than that, I think the only other things I did differently was I did a bias bound facing for the armholes and for the neckline. Obviously I did sleeveless version. And then for the hem, I just actually did a real hem on this, like a double folded hem. Single folded, didn't double fold it. Might go back and do that. Not. But yeah, it's a full circle skirt, which I have really never made before and had to hem. So that was that was cool. Um, it went way better than I expected. Enough about that, baby. Don't worry, I'll have all these patterns linked down below in the description box. And if I can find any of the fabrics, I'll link those too. I'm gonna give you a quick reminder, the giveaway I'm doing with Atelier Adopt is ending tonight. So. So head over to Instagram and make sure you get entered because you do not want to miss out on that giveaway. So the next thing I made in the month of January was actually a poof. It was not clothing, it was a home decor piece and it was my closet core poof. I've been wanting to make one of these for a long time simply because I have so many scraps. Thought it would take more scraps than it did. It took a lot of scraps. But I probably have enough to do a second one, and by that I mean the stuffing. The outside really doesn't take much. I could probably make 50,000 with the scraps that I have for the bigger pieces. But the, what I used for the stuffing inside, yeah, I, I probably could add a little more because they've settled and scrunched in and stuff. But it pro I, my estimate is that it weighs about 40 pounds, four zero pounds. Yeah, it's heavy. It's real heavy. It's heavier than my kids, so that's why I think it's 40 pounds. We're enjoying it. It's good to sit on with the, like when I'm on the floor with the kids and stuff. It's nicer than sitting on the floor. So yeah, the kids have been going crazy on it. Like they use it for gymnastics. They jump onto it, off of it, over it. They do all these things with it. They are pretty happy with that. That is a free tutorial from Closet Core. So again, I will link that in the description box. Check it out. Get rid of some scraps. It's uh, it's a great way to do that. All right, then the next thing is actually not really a make, but I dyed my fabric and I'm not gonna, sh well, okay, I have one here. I'll show you a sneak peek. There's gonna be a video coming on this potentially next week, probably not till the week after though, and I am over the moon with how these turned out. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. One of my goals for this year, 2021, is kind of to like sew through my stash and just like clean up what I have going on. So one of those things was a needle sharp box from like, I'll link it below, but I think it was March of 2020. And it's the olive jumpsuit. And I had chosen this kind of 
leafy print, I guess you would call it, tropical leaves. And so I had cut out the muslin like forever ago and I'm like, it was just sitting there. I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. So I made the muslin, ended up shortening the bodice by an inch and then I didn't shorten the legs at all. Kind of wish I would have, I'll get to that in a minute. I did end up shortening the straps a lot and I, I think I might even shorten them more because when I wear it stra uh, braless, it's like kind of gapy. So it's like still wearable, nothing flashes, but I think I might still shorten the straps. I could probably go another two inches shorter on the straps to be honest. Yeah, so I've made that. The length, again, I didn't shorten the legs before I made like on the pattern piece because my muslin wasn't that long. And I thought, you know, if I wear it with heels or whatever, it'll be, it, it'll be good but then when I made this one I don't know if it just grew or what because this is a rayon I it's it was too long and in the photo on the pattern piece it has it like cuffed up and I tried to do that but it was like not happening with this fabric um I so then I wasn't sure was I gonna cuff it and then sew the cuffs or was I just gonna hem it and I had kind of decided that I was gonna like cuff it and then sew it the wrong you know the wrong way so the underside is showing for a really casual look but then a mishap happened there was a mishap I had them pinned up so that I wasn't walking on them just to see what I wanted to do I went and sat on the couch and it of course when you sit it pulls on the leg and I wasn't I didn't orientate it right and it, the, I made a hole I made a hole in the back of the leg so I ended up cutting them off and cropping them. Yeah, I could have just mended the hole and nobody would have noticed. And I don't know, maybe I should have done that. So now they are cropped, which is great for summer. And I think even for winter, I can wear like, I mean, we don't go anywhere, but I could wear like tights underneath. And, and then I have some like really cute booties that I could wear with them. So if I ever have to go anywhere ever again in the winter time, I might try that. But yeah, overall, I'm, I'm happy with the turnout. I think I should have sized down at least one size. It's just kind of big everywhere and doesn't seem to really like follow the shape of my body as well as I think it should. So there's that. I do love the pockets in it. It does have the cinched in waistband. Like you do a, you do a waistband on the outside. What is it called? A channel? Waist drawstring. Drawstring and drawstring channel. So that's kind of nice that it does give that shaping. Although, I don't know, maybe I prefer it with it. I don't know. It's all right, I am definitely gonna wear it. I'll definitely wear the heck out of it come spring, summer, potentially fall. And yeah, it's really good in the winter to layer over longer sleeves and stuff like that. So that was that. Olive jumpsuit. The, the pattern is by the Olive by Untitled Thoughts. And that's the first pattern I've tried of theirs too. So it was, I was quite happy with the instructions and all that, it, it did turn out really well. If you saw my um, upcycling ideas video, you would have seen this top. This, this is the Saldana from So So Def, and I used it, or I made it using two thrifted t shirts. Yeah, two. The, so yes, I went on a rant about this. This was this one was an extra large, and this one was a two X, or vice versa. I think actually. This was an extra large and this was a 2X. And I made an extra, extra small crop tee. So yeah, I wasn't really thrilled about how much fabric I got out of an extra large and a 2XL because they were definitely not what I would consider those sizes. Just, yeah, I have a video. You can go watch it. But the Saldana, love the pattern. I have to make one of these for myself. It is just so cool and color blocked and it's just different than anything I really see anywhere else. So definitely love this. And this was kind of also a tester, uh, tester piece for what's gonna be coming in my new shop. So love the pattern and I, I do love how this turned out. So then I also had another video that I made for Pattern Niche or New Horizons Designs this month and that was the Elevation yeah. hoodie. Uh, and I made this one for my daughter. Okay. I love this sweater. So I love the pockets. They're kind of like a welt style slash kangaroo pouch pocket. They are so adorable. Did this extra little detail here. Did some extra details on the grommets. Did this braided drawstring. I, I just am in love with this. It is actually, I don't even think it's out on the channel yet. Ooh, guess you're getting a sneak peek of this. 
yeah, I just, I just love it. This, I got this leopard print from Sheer Perfection. This olive was from a D stash, and then this pink was from I had in my stash. I think originally I bought it at Fabric Snob. So yeah, totally, totally love this. Kind of want to make myself a matching one. And then I made this top for an upcoming video. This is the Hala Agnes swing top or dress. So I made the dress before and now I made the top and I made it out of this rib knit bamboo rib. I got in a D stash. Love this. I always, I, I'm always like this. I'm like, okay, this pink is supposed to be one of my colors, but I don't know. I don't know, it's gonna wash me out or whatever, and then I make it and I love it. So I do have a lot more of this, so I don't know, I think I'm gonna make myself some more tops in this rib knit. The only thing I will say about it is that I shortened it. The instructions say to shorten at the hem and at the waist, but I thought if I shortened at the waist, it would end up too short, but I should have. So what I did was when I was cutting the fabric, I trimmed off three inches from the hem. And then when I had put it on after it was sewn, it was still longer, like it was tunic length. So I folded it up three inches again and then did a one inch hem. So I ended up, yeah, cutting off, technically cutting off five inches total length. So I should have, I think I should have split that because you lose a lot of the swing factor when you, uh, when you cut off the hem. So I think next time I would, I will, maybe take like two, two and a half, maybe even three inches out of the waist and then the rest off the hem. But I do really like the length. I just love everything about this, the fit, everything. It, it turned out really, really nice and I'm so happy I made myself a version. The sleeves, if you follow me on Instagram, you kind of saw my saga with that. They ended up being like just this weird shape and size. So I had to take them in a lot. So I'm wondering if maybe I should have just sized down to begin with. I, I think I still would have had to take uh, width out of the sleeve, but it wasn't, it, it was fixable and it looks okay now, so it wasn't a big deal. But yeah, there is my Hala Agnes top, swing top. All right, there's two more things I made. I'm gonna leave the Sapporo to last, even though I made it before this, but the other thing was the Sapporo Fall turtleneck so there's the rise and the fall the rise is a more fitted version with a lower uh like a mock turtleneck kind of okay it's not mock it's just a lower turtleneck and then the fall is a looser fit with the high turtleneck like you can see how high this is and that's the one i went for and it has a little bit of a drop shoulder and it's the coziest thing i made mine in this french terry organic french terry but at sheer perfection fabrics and it's just like I just want to wear it all the time. I'm not like 100% happy with the fit and and finish of it. Well, the finish is okay, but the fit, not like it's not like my favorite thing. If I were to make it again, there'd be some adjustments, but I just like it's so cozy. So I, again, it's like it's like boxy, right? And I have a larger bust, so it does hang off. That I knew that was gonna happen, but it doesn't really bother me. The thing that bothers me more is the length. It is, I would say, it is cropped I have to wear high-waisted pants with it and that kind of thing that's just my comfort um, and then the, sh the sleeves are short too and like I have probably I like I would call this bracelet length maybe even slightly well probably bracelet length when I stretch my arm out and I am only five foot two I did not adjust this pattern at all so if you are taller or have a longer torso or longer arms they will be short on you I ended up doing the size medium I think that was where um, oh, I went off the finished measurements, that's right. So I think the measurements put me into a large and then I ended up sizing down because of the finished measurements. So I don't know, maybe if I would have done a large, the sleeves might have been, actually I don't even think the sleeve, no, the sleeve length didn't change. And I don't think the bodice length changed either very much. So I don't know, I did do a one inch hem on both the sleeve and the and the bottom so I guess that would be a little bit of difference there but other than that super happy it is a really tall turtleneck and I think maybe I'm just not used to it I was like to my husband I'm like do I look like I'm wearing a neck brace and he's like yeah kind of but then I like kind of scrunched it down and it was better the thing is also I think I think it would be better in a like a, a looser um 
like a drapier fabric or lighter fabric. This is quite heavy what I'm using and the neck is four layers. So definitely super warm but it also gets really stiff especially if you're using a heavier fabric which also I think is why I had to cut a new neck piece because the original piece using the original pattern piece it was like I could not get it over my head I was like it was hurting me trying to pull just the neck piece all over my head I sewed it up I'm like this is tiny and then I had to stop because I'm like this is gonna have to get cut off of me if I ever get it on my head and then I just made it wider I made it probably four inches wider and it's actually coincidentally the same size as the neck opening now so it worked out good uh, it is like I could have went a little looser you can see it's looser here but I don't mind that it's not you know doesn't make me look like that so that's all right for this version I think um, I have some ITY that I might do a version with a tighter neck um, we'll see and then the moment you've all been okay, just me just me I've just been waiting to show this off my Sapporo <sighs> ah! I love this I am totally obsessed with it. Right, my daughter calls it a mushroom picking shirt, or mushroom picking coat. Is that what you called it? Whatever. She's not a fan, neither is my husband, so it must be fashionable, right? So if you're not familiar with the Sapporo, it is a cocoon style coat, meaning the sleeve is like attached to the bodice lower down, does that make sense? The shoulder is quite dropped and then the sleeve attaches slower down so it gives that kind of shape curved shape there it has a lot of awesome detailed seam lines so the back has the two diagonal seam lines and then the front also has has diagonal seam lines which is where the hidden pockets are which is probably my favorite part um there's mitered corners which are mind-blowing and easy they do recommend they do call this a skilled pattern which is like middle of their pattern difficulty level I would say if the pattern directions were better this could be done by a beginner there really wasn't anything difficult the hardest part was understanding some of the directions and I don't know if the PDF pattern is better like more detailed directions or if it's you know just because I had the paper pattern or what but there was a couple things that I was kind of confused about I guess um, just would have liked a little bit more detail in the in the instruction but it turned out beautifully I used this what did they call it wool coating Deadstock wool coating from Blackbird Fabrics. I have a whole video on my Deadstock haul from Blackbird, and this was one of the fabrics. So it's actually wool, like sheep's wool, and mohair, which is from the Angora goat, and then nylon. So that is what that is. And then the lining, I got this on my anniversary with my husband, our wedding anniversary. We stopped at the thrift store because we were early for supper so I got to pick up a few pieces and it can always remind me of that I thought these colors went really really well with this it's called marsh brown but this this brown on the outside and I just love the fun pop of of kind of spring and summer inside when you open the coat so yeah I just can't say how much how happy I am with this because it's just incredible and I did my own little label in there from sheer perfection as well um, not much else to say on this. I did the short version with the short sleeve and it comes, well you can see, it comes not quite to my wrist, which I think is a good idea. I, I thought it would be all the way to my wrist, but obviously it wasn't, so I think, I don't know if I like that better than having it all the way to my wrist. It's okay, because it doesn't, it's not like a cold, cold, it's not like a parka, right? It doesn't have anything to close it up in the middle so you're not going to be wearing it when it's like incredibly cold out and, and I can wear like a sweater underneath and then have that peeking out which I think is really cute yeah I cannot wait till the weekend when I go grocery shopping so I can wear it out in public love it I'm just so in love with it all right so that is everything I made in January unless unless I get whoops I get to this before the month is over I'm hoping to make a sweatsuit out of this so this is from my atelier adopt 
haul my last video if you guys haven't seen it go check it out but I think I'm gonna do a two-piece sweatsuit they've been incredibly popular and I mean why not this is like super I would I would call this like loud fabric and I think it's just fun to it would just be fun to have a full set of it so I'm thinking my Anima pants again another paper cut pattern and then I'm thinking probably the going home Raglan from Ellie and Mac or the Fall in Love sweater from Ellie and Mac. I haven't decided yet. So if I get that done, I'll see it here. But if not, that'll be into February. The plans for February include fixing some things that need to be fixed. I have my ginger skirt, Seamwork ginger skirts that I haven't even gotten to war and the zipper needs to be replaced on it. And then I have to hem my Ruth skirt still that I made a million years ago. And then I want to, I need to sew up some of my dyed linen again for that video that's coming up. I need to make my kids curtains and bedding. I would like to make a pair of pants just cause I don't really have any like good wear pants. I'm thinking maybe a pair of Arden pants again. We'll see. And then I also want to spend a day in the sewing room with my little girl here, mm -hmm. my daughter, whatever Making. she wants to sew. Making Barbie clothes and dolly clothes. Making Barbie clothes and dolly clothes. And maybe something for her too. And then there's also, I wanted to get at my Chanel Bali book and do something out of that. I'd also like to organize my fabrics again, kind of like now that we're getting into more springy stuff, well, we'll be getting into more springy stuff and kind of rotate my fabrics out and kind of time. make a game plan and see what I'm gonna be doing next. Um, so that's kind of my plan for February is just kind of regroup, I guess. Uh, now that I kind of have my sojo back and I feel like sewing more and, you know, figure out what the plan is um. getting through my stash. And I also want to say in February, I think I'm going to go back to two videos a week. It just, it wasn't great for my channel doing one video a week. Um, well, it was good in some ways and some ways not. But honestly, for me, it was worse. I just felt kind of like in limbo almost. And yeah, I'm going to go back to two videos a week. So you can look forward to that in February. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.